on to Unit 6, which is all about international trade, foreign exchange, capital flow, things like that. Generally, this unit can go really, really in-depth. I mean, technically, all these units can go really in-depth, but specifically this unit. AP Macro typically tests you very surface level, so for this video, we're going to do a very simplified understanding of Unit 6. So first, you need to understand the idea of the balance of payments. The balance of payments basically measures the trade between two different countries. But first, let's understand trade in general. You can have a trade surplus and trade deficit. Remember when you learned Unit 5 about budget surplus and budget deficit? Same thing here. A trade surplus is when you're exporting more than is being imported. A trade deficit is when you're importing more or you're exporting less. The net exports, remember that thing in the GDP formula? It's exports minus imports. So you need to know these three concepts. So let's go on to the balance of payments. The balance of payments is just a trade between two different countries. There's two main accounts. The current account, which typically stands as CA, and a capital and financial account, CFA. CA makes up general goods, things you actually buy from a country, net exports, investment income, and net transfers. So money flow from public or private sectors. So any investments, any exports, and any transfers. That's the current account. The current capital and financial account is the purchase and sales of financial assets abroad. This stands for like stocks, bonds, derivatives, things like that typically stand with the capital and financial account. Also, you need to know this formula. Current plus capital financial equals zero. That means current could be like, let's say, $100 billion. Then in a country, if it's $100 billion for the current account, the capital and financial account is negative $100 billion. Both one of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive. Now you need to understand the idea of an exchange rate. You've probably dealt with an exchange rate in the past. Exchange rates are the price of one currency in comparison to the other. So let's say, hypothetically, that the euro. The euro is $2. That means the price of one euro is $2. One euro is equal to, one euro is equal to $2. So let's say, hypothetically, then that means $1 is equal to $0.50 cents in European standards. So you need to understand this idea of exchange rates. And we've talked about this in the past in Unit 4 and Unit 5, but there are two main types of exchange rates. Fixed exchange rates and floating exchange rates. Fixed exchange rates stay the same. So $1 for 2 euros is going to stay the same in 10, 20, 30 years. But in reality, we don't really see that. We see floating exchange rates, where the exchange rates change over time based on the supply and demand of each currency. Now, let's understand the foreign exchange market. It's basically the market for foreign exchange, typically called Forex. It compares two different currencies. Currency depreciation means the currency is less valuable, while currency appreciation means it is more valuable. So you need to understand those two main ideas. And, like most things in AP Macro, we have a graph for this. On the x-axis, we have two main graphs you need to understand. On this graph, we have the x-axis quantity of dollars, on the y-axis, we have euros, underlined here. On this graph, quantity of euros, dollars. So this is showing the supply and demand of dollars and its exchange to euros. Same thing here. Euros is doing the opposite, but rather it's showing the, it's showing the exchange euros is going to have to dollars, but it's showing the demand and supply of euros and dollars. So let's say that the dollar appreciates appreciates. If the dollar appreciates, if the dollar is more valuable, that means the euro is less valuable. Why is that? Because according to the floating exchange rate, if a dollar becomes more valuable, then a euro is going to be less valuable. So instead of a dollar for two euros, it will become a dollar for um, a dollar for one euro, let's say. That means that a euro depreciates. So if one currency hypothetically appreciates, the other depreciates. Make sure you know that. Both currencies aren't going to appreciate, both currencies can't depreciate. So if the dollar appreciates, the demand for dollars increases because it's more valuable, then well, your euro supply increases because more people are going to get dollars, less people are going to have euros. Now there's hundreds and hundreds of different examples of shifts and changes that you can make towards appreciation, dollars, euros, that we're not going to be talking about here today. But if you really want to get a 5 on the exam, you should probably understand that. In the description, there's a lot of practice problems with that. 
online, there's a lot of questions regarding foreign exchange that you can go through and learn more and more about this and how to actually change all these. Now, how do we actually change currency appreciation? There's four main things that you need to know. Change in taste, change in income, change in price level, change in interest rates. Change in taste, let's say that goods are only sold in one currency. Let's say that you only can buy Saudi Arabian oil with US dollars. That increases the value of dollars. Change in income, let's say Americans are more wealthier and have more money in general. That appreciates the currency. Change in price level, let's say that prices increase overall. That depreciates currency. Why? Because with inflation, if there's more currency going on, if there's more supply for a currency, that means that there's going to be less value for each one. It's kind of the idea we learned last unit, where more currency there is, the more supply there is, the less value there is overall. Then a change in interest rates, if there is a higher interest rate, there will be less investment income, because if there's higher interest, then why would people want to invest in your country? Because there's no real value with that. So higher interest rates can depreciate currency, a lower interest rate can appreciate currency. Now we need to understand the main policies with Forex, and there's a lot of questions regarding this. There's some trade restrictions that you do have to understand. A quota is a limit on the quantity of imports, so it's, the, it's limiting the amount of imports you can take from a country. So let's back 67, actually no sorry, maybe like 90 years ago, the United States had a quota on immigration. Only 100,000 Chinese people could come, or only 50,000 Indian people would come. That's a quota, it's a limit on how many people we can import. Tariffs is a tax on imports, so recently President Donald Trump in the US has been implementing tariffs across a lot of different countries to tax them and make them pay more and more. This increases the price of goods, but also can increase government revenue. One thing that's not actually mentioned here is, and I've started to see this more and more in recent AP macro exams, are sanctions. Sanctions are when a country wants to basically tariff another country as a way uh, tactically to get them to do something politically. It's basically a type of tariff. Then we've already talked about fixed and floating exchange rates. Make sure you understand both of them. Fixed stays the same, floating changes. Now let's talk about the changes in foreign exchange. All you need to know, depreci appreciation decreases net exports. So we're starting to import more. Why is this? When you appreciate the currency, the country gets richer. If a country gets richer, then generally their country is going to become more service-based. Also, they're going to want more and more products abroad. If Americans are richer, they might want Brazilian tea or Japanese, I don't know, kimonos. So they're starting to import more and they're starting to produce less. If it's depreciation, that increases into exports, so you're exporting more. Why? Because you're a cheaper country, so your goods are cheaper, and thus you can produce them for cheaply and produce more and more. In fact, China's been doing this recently, where they've been trying to depreciate their currency so that they can export more and more goods all across the world. Now, the final topic, the final idea you need to understand in AP Macro is the idea of capital flow. Two main capital idea, two main types of capital flow, and this is relatively easy. Inbound capital flow, money entering the country. Outbound, money leaving the country. Very simple. Inbound, money's entering, outbound is leaving. Now, as I stated before, this unit can get really complicated. There are topics in this unit that are really complex, like changing these graphs and being able to understand these graphs. However, generally on the exam, it's a very simplified approach, very surface level. If you understand all of this, you'll probably get 90% of the questions right regarding Unit 6. However, if you want to get a 5, I really urge you to better understand foreign exchange, how to change these graphs, how all of this makes sense in the context of the world. All of that can help you easily get a 5.